This is Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. Did you guys see this? This is unbelievable. What is that all about, Kinger? Get in here for the real thing. Like, let's get weird. Maybe I blacked out trying to figure out what was going on. Doubt, worry, fear, because that's what we're breaking the mold on here. Welcome to Wild on 7th, presented by Pilot Games. We're here until it's here. Welcome back to Wild on 7th, your favorite wild podcast. As always, presented by our friends at Pilot Games. Uh, this is a group here that likes to enjoy their libations out. We'll get into that in a little bit. Some of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when you're out enjoying those, you guys use Pilot Games products, right, fellas? Because when you do, your community wins. You've got Stillwater Youth Hockey. John, you're, you're a white bear guy. Some, some Edina there, a little cake eater. But uh, we want those communities to win kids to win um they give back so uh, with that you heard me drop a name in here we've got we've got a lot to talk about uh it seems like it's been a while there's a lot to cover from the the wild schedule where they've been and we've got somebody uh, between kinger and i here to introduce so Kinger, why don't you take it away this interview is sponsored by duke cannon if you don't know duke cannon all you got to do is roll into your neighborhood target walmart even the hardware store and you're just going to see a killer lineup. You're going to see big-ass bricks of soap as big as Felino's hands. You're going to see thick body wash. If you're playing beer league, this stuff takes a minute to get off your body. You're going to be clean when you get to the bar. You're going to see beard care product, colognes, hair wash. By the way, Duke Cannon donates money to veterans' causes each year through the Duke Cannon Veterans Fund. Minnesota company, if your hair is a weapon or you wish it was, check out Duke Cannon, work harder, smell better. Does it get more St. Paul than this? This is like having Mr. Mancini come over to your table, give you the sheet cake, the spumoni, toss it on your bell. We got big Al Stalock here. He's, uh, he's dabbling in the color commentary for the San Jose sh- Sharks. Jesus. <laughs> Who's got the shakes? <laughs> He's got this shakes. I know. I haven't had a drink in a couple days. I gotta correct you too, but it's South St. Paul. It'll drive the city of South St. Paul. Damn it! I did. We just start over. No, you're fine. um, It. I'm rattled. I'm rattled. I don't know. (laughs) Just take over for a minute. I'm gonna gather myself. The only reason is because the Let's Play Hockey would come out and it'd get dropped off at your rink. And you always had to check that it say like South St. Paul next to Phil Hauser. Did it say St. Paul? Because it, believe it or not, we are our own city. Let me try what's to recover. It, what's the Let next me... thing you check that it says you're five ten instead of? No, I mean this was <laughs> I, I was ten years old. Oh, okay. So I looking got... if Phil was from South St. Paul or St. I Paul. I got notes here. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. He's a former Clark Cup champion with Cedar Rapids. I don't know if he scored a goalie goal. I want to get into that in his career. He's a Packer. But not that type of Packer, um, and uh, he's just a—he's a great dude. We had him on the pod way back when, when we were out in the wilderness Grass in our rooks. first our first year. The green room, <laughs> the, you remember yeah. that? Oh yeah, yeah. It smelled like I must there. step over the syringes and walk into the studio. But uh, super <laughs> happy to super happy. This will be a fun. One. We're just gonna do the whole show with him. You watch, and, uh, you watch Wild, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as I can. Yeah. With your yeah. life. I mean, you With have a bit, yeah, busy now life. I'm, yeah, except for, except for a coaching role, a color role. I know. And, you're uh, you're a big... Tryout evaluator role. That was just one day. That was one day. One day, yeah. You're like Dwayne Johnson, like triple threat, can do all kinds of stuff. Arms are getting there. I did 25 straight push-ups yesterday. Did actually. you? Yeah. <laughs> were you on I your knees? I asked my son how many... Th- no, I was on my feet. He asked how many I, could, I did 25, but they were the tight ones. Tight elbows ones. Elbows in? Try, like the, yeah, elbows, elbows in. Elbows back. So <laughs> That's good. Harder. That's not bad. That's good. Can I want to I want to go on offense now since I had such a poor start. So uh, someone in this group, you can guess, um, is almost about to complete a feat that's really unbelievable. It, I just learned about it in I'm, the hockey world. So it. there's holes in one. There's goalie goals, 
And then there's um, Sober October. Mm -hmm. 31-day month. (laughs) Terrible choice. Right in the height of it. Florida trip mixed in. Um, I actually sat at the Drunken Taco in Fort Lauderdale with someone on this podcast that was completing Sober October and watched him try to order a non-alcoholic beer <laughs> in Florida. And I think they might have, I don't even know if they were going to get the a The lady's gun. jaw was, hit the floor. She was gonna, <laughs> yes. Was it the Athletic Brew? Uh, no, they, they didn't, didn't have, have any. I said, do really? you have any NA beer? She goes, you're the second one to ask me that today, and I've never heard of that before. Were, were you there in the morning already, or what? <laughs> yeah, it was, well, well, it wasn't that late. Probably no, we were watching one. the Viking game, but yeah. it. Uh, uh, how, how, how did it, are you going to make it? I mean, you got Halloween. You might have a wagon pulling your kid around with trick or treating. You're going to maybe buckle last day. Are you going to get through sober October? And no, what has it there. been like? We're there. What's it been like? It's a lot of me time. Yeah, a lot of me time. All of a sudden, <laughs> a lot of reflecting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, but it was it was. It's tough on the road because there's not there's not a lot to do, and then there's a long road trip. So you're like Sunday, you go watch football. Without having a beer or two, it's like, what do you do? Right. So I'd like have to take breaks and go like walk or something. <laughs> do you opt out of stuff? I did it in yeah. January once, and my kids were still playing hockey, and I would just go home after the game. Wouldn't go to the bar because I'm like, it was like the only way to get through it was just to basically live a monk life. Or are you still out there living, just not just drinking water or whatever? Yeah, I'd say I'm still out there. You're out there. See, that's better. That's better. Do you like it? It, this, by the way, this was troubling for me because I went on a road trip about as long as the wild. I've been eating and drinking my way through several states, and we would be like walking around in Fort Lauderdale, and Carter would be in this maroon shirt with like sports shoes on, living his best life. He was almost glowing, like he, like a <laughs> yeah, preg- like a pregnant woman. And I think it just feels that way too because you know what's going on internally. I know, I know. And <laughs> you know I, what I mean, so you're kind of jealous. You're waking up. You're still rubbing your eyes. It's like eleven. You know how you look like in the mirror, and you know how he looks. And- I wasn't even looking in the mirror. I think I finished my fourth term as president of the United States at this point. The way I was looking and and just watching this, just a spring in his step. And well, good for you, man. I'm I'm proud of you. I I couldn't the, believe it. The biggest hurdle is is going to a spot and asking for an na beer that was probably the hardest part and it was probably a little under your breath yeah exactly ask, like, no confidence it's not on the menu so you have to <laughs> right. go like off the menu right you haven't eaten non-alcoholic beer and when you do that in like, florida like I, what say that again i'm pretty sure she reached under the she was looking for like a weapon underneath the counter when you asked for that i mean florida no but not. a couple of funny things did happen she she i was like i'll just have water then so she brought me like the the biggest mug of water you could ever have in a beer mug and then she was like proud of me so then she brought a bottled water special just for me and said this one's on me wow. set, set a bottle down she said, you can take that with i you. drank that by the way he <laughs> left it he left it in some sort of silent i was silent like, I was like, good enough. I was like she shamed me i'm not taking your grace now you keep it no label on that bottle of water either it okay. was like from PH like seven. a it was probably vodka <laughs> it's a low pH level. So, are you, do you are you sleeping better? Yes, really, unbelievable. How's the anxiety? Doesn't exist. Yeah, it's amazing, right? Yeah. So all you have to do is not drink, and then everything's better. Yes. But drinking also super, <laughs> super fun though. Super fun. Yeah. I do know that that's there if I ever need it. Yeah. It's although October, what a strange choice. Florida trip. He well, it was the end of summer, so summer. It was a big summer. Is there, there's a golf tournament involved that was the trigger point for this? What's well, it was just kind of the end. It was, and you guys both play in this? No, Cal okay. doesn't. Well, but I, it, I've, been part, I've, I've watched. <laughs> I go for the, what is for the this? last couple holes. You have like a Lollapalooza golf tournament where you were living a Motley Crue life? Or? Yeah, it's like the final final of the year. Okay, I, thanks so for the like invite, mi- by like, the way. It's like mid-September, training camp's about to start, and as soon as that, golf tournament's over, clubs are away. And it's discipline. You, you, you put, yeah, you put the shorts and the golf shirts in the closet. Now it's, you know, business casual attire. Do you think your sober October contributed to the Wilds hot start? Because the whole thing was we got to get off to a good start. Billy G. I bought in. You bought in. I bought in. So you you had the Velcro nameplate, the Fanatics practice jersey, the military lifestyle, and you got, you're a big in. part of it. I bought in. Well, thank you, because I've really enjoyed being <laughs> drunk and eating food, watching the Wild watching play great. Play. Yes, right. I mean, it's been awesome, which we should get into. I mean, this is what we wanted. This is a great start. Um, 
I got the opportunity to watch them. Uh, I had I don't know that I've seen the Wild on the road very much, but if you're a fan, and I am a fan, um, watching your team on the road is awesome. In Just person. In person. Yeah. And being in a hostile environment and um, standing up when they score and no one else is standing up. We had a guy yell at us, all you have is the Mayo Clinic. That was a line from the Florida people. And uh, and then, where's your Stanley Cup? And I was pointing at the scoreboard. It was, it's a fun experience. Where's your to, Stanley Cup? You yeah. must love that line right now. <laughs> yeah, and I, I will say Florida didn't. Where were the links at this point? Did they ex- play game ex- five yet? Uh, I did watch that. Uh, in, I don't know if that game was before well, you or after. That was that the night of the drunken taco. Yeah, that was tough. It was uh, a Sunday night game, I think, right? The game five? Yeah. Well, there's been some conspiracy. They like, stole it that game Monday, from us. But... New York stole that. We had the face mask with Darnold. So luckily, the Wild are kind of the Wild are finding this little speed slot. And uh, I, besides the weird Philly game, which we'll get into, but what's your takes on the hot start? What do you What do you think, Al? What have you seen that you've liked? Well, the goaltending, obviously, being a goalie, yeah, yeah, it's goal all goaltending. Goaltending's been great, been <laughs> phenomenal. But you got to put the puck in the net, right? Um, I think it's the special teams has been good. It's, uh, I think, it, and you get in these when you win games. It's funny, like, it just it seems like it's impossible to lose when you go on these streaks, you know. And vice versa, when you're losing games, it's like, what? How the heck do we get this back on track? And I think they're in one of those. Uh, Runs where everything's going the right way, and they're playing hard. They're deserving all their wins, but it's just you get on these heaters and you just never want to leave them. Like at whether it's the craps table or the uh, pull tab box, you know, you get on a heater, you just want to stay there and keep riding it out. And it looks like they're having fun doing it, and that's uh, probably the most important part, right? As when, a group, they're getting along and they're having fun. It's like keep this thing going because you never want it to end. Dude, what's it like when you're a goaltender in the groove? I mean, you've got you've played four or five great games. Like you're just feeling it, and you watch Gus. There's, he's not kicking out rebounds. He's not making great saves because he doesn't have to. Like he's just there. He's ready. He's reading plays. Like he's on it. I think you you almost can't see it because he's playing so well. Right. If that makes sense. What's it like? Goalies want to stay in the net when that happens. Like what's that like? Because all of a sudden he's playing great, but then Mark Andre Fleury, they, like they need to get him in a game. Mm-hmm. He plays a game, and then the next one, Gus, he's he kind of he isn't as good as he was. Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for it. I've never played three or four consecutive games. <laughs> but when the game, when one game goes really well, and you want to get, true. and you want to get back in there, it, it, it feels really good. But I know it's you get in a rhythm, and I know today's NHL as well. They don't you don't practice a ton anymore, so that feeling of scoring, you know, getting in there and playing well, and you get to go right back in there the next night. You have no thoughts about going into practice, how practice went. It's just what you had in your last game. And, you know, you post a, a big game, you go in there, you have all the confidence in the world to go in there again. It just keeps snowballing and snowballing and snowballing. There's not a ton of practice, maybe a little pregame skate just to feel the puck, and then you just keep that momentum rolling, and I think it, you just feel unbeatable. And then, you know, you have a game where maybe pucks bounce in, it's weird goals, and go back and take a look at the video, and you hopefully can mentally get back to that same spot. I actually think it was probably practice that derailed the group. So the way the schedule laid out, it was everything went well through Florida. Then they go to Tampa, and Tampa, the practice rink is shut down because of the hurricane, so no practice. And then there was concerts moved into the game rink, so no available ice, so they couldn't practice. And they play well in Tampa yep. on Thursday night. Then Friday, they get to Philly, and it's later. That's a longer flight. That's like a 2 a.m. arrival kind of in Philly. But the only time that they were going to be able to practice was like 1 o'clock at their practice rink, 30 minutes away from the hotel. So guys got in late, then they had to kind of wake up and then get right to the rink to go to practice, and then that kind of messes up your whole day. So you're there for an hour, hour and a half. You come back. It's too late to, like, take a nap and catch up on the sleep you lost the night before. Uh, and then it's a quick turnaround to a 1 o'clock game the next day. So ironically, I think it's it was practice that probably took some life out of the guys. Like That's a catch-22. Like, you go three games without a practice. You know? Right. Yeah, no, I agree. And – where were they at? The UPenn or whatever, the practice facility? In in Philly, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you're not in a normal dressing room. you got to move all your gear, whether they dress and drive. And it's just yeah. logistically, it's a lot. And I think, you know, you're, point, you're on the road and it's a bit of a grind and you get in late. It just, it seems like a ton. And then you get back to the hotel and you're already exhausted, even though practice probably wasn't very hard at all. No, it's, it's just, just getting them out of there. Yeah, getting on the bus, you know, all that. It seems, it seems like nothing, but. I think it adds up, and then you got a quick turnaround the next game for a noon a noon game yeah. out east. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, that's not easy. No, 
Yeah. It was going to be, it kind of sets up to be one of those goofy games. Yeah. And it was going into it, you know? It was. Right. What's it like, though, when you're sitting up there, like you don't have a shot? So in this Philly game, goaltending played a huge part in it. Tough for Gus, man. He, he gives up, well, I think, two goals on his first three shots, then doesn't see one for 30 minutes. It's awful. It's a, then the only thing in your head is the last time the puck went in, what could I have done different on that goal? You know, it's hard, 30, to, sweep, for it's hard to sweep away a goal. And you want to you maybe handle the puck, get out and at least touch it, play it, you know, to feel it. But, uh, yeah, when you don't see shots, all you're thinking about is everything but really the game. It's nice when you have 40 shots because <laughs> yeah, it's right. just shot after shot after shot, especially when they're on the perimeter. But, um, yeah, when you're not getting anything and they got two goals in their first three shots, it's, uh, it's not a great feeling. You're hoping that uh, they spend some time in the zone. I wanted to ask you, Karts, as – well, you're both analysts, so you can both give a way in on this, but there's been weird stuff going on with shots this year. There's been a lot of games – I always think, you know, 10 a period, whatever, 30 shots about. There's been a lot of games where I'm watching, and the Wild might have one shot, and they're 13 minutes into the game, right? And I don't know if that's because – and it tended to not matter because we were getting the first goal, and and then and then there would be periods where, like uh, – you know, in the in the Philly game where they stuck at six shots for two periods, and have has there been is that an early season thing or what's that about? Because I I've just I don't remember as a fan watching so many games where you would actually say this is weird. Look, we only have one shot through seventeen minutes, or or they haven't had a shot in two periods. Is that a because we're playing good D on on our side, but also it seems like we're we're getting pucks to the net eventually by the end of the game, but it doesn't seem like we get a lot of shots at the start of games. I think that they're they're more selective in their shot taking right now. That's certainly happening, and then they're only getting it from the top two lines, and they're finding ice. So and they're scoring. So it, they don't need volume right now. <laughs> they don't, you know. And and coach probably loves it because he doesn't have to be like you got to throw pucks to the net. And we touched on this in the broadcast again in the Philly game. Think about the wild goals. They're all pretty, man. They're all through a seam. They're power play. They're back door. You know, they're drive the back post, put it on his tape, tap it in. They haven't had a lot of Erickson Eck go to the paint, off his shin pad, off his skate, something in the net, kind of greasy, ugly goals because they've been able to put them in in a pretty fashion. And then you you look at the stats. This was crazy. I couldn't believe this. You look at the stats for the bottom six for the wild, and they, they really – they don't even. They haven't played in such a way where volume matters to them either. Marcus Foligno, before the Philly game, had one shot on goal for yeah. the season. His shooting percentage. I was sorting stats, and he was like a fifty percent shooting percentage for yeah. the year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, so he's got what four shots on goal for yeah. the year? Three of them were in the Philly game. And they and they b- couple goals. I mean, so great. they haven't like. And think about the way that he plays. It's shoot the puck to the net, try to get a rebound. That's how he's going to score. And that's actually how he got these goals. You know, like going to the net. One is cut to the middle. Another one's a tip, but right at the net. They just haven't had to because they've been scoring and they've been playing good D. The the crazy part about the stats is that if you look at that line, so like Felino's line, expected goals for they were they were like top ten in the league, meaning they're giving up zero chances a night against. So they maybe have given up one or two total chances the entire season, and they're getting them on the other end, but not not, not in large volume. So just think about like how good they are defensively. They're giving up absolutely nothing, literally nothing, because they're still tilting the ice in their favor despite not getting any shots. Right. I, I think it's a I think it's a momentum thing too. I think watching it from up top and for years watching it from the bench, you can see when it's coming. It's small like it's something as small as a penalty kill, a good penalty killer. You, you take a you have the momentum and you take a a penalty, it just deflates the bench, and you can almost feel it coming. And then the ice tilts a little bit, and then it just keeps going and going. And ice, you know, it snowballs and it ends up being in your zone for the rest of the period. Where you take a penalty with eight minutes left, and all of a sudden you're hemmed in the zone for the last eight minutes after that kill. And like you said, too, shot quality, it's so different the game now from even like 10, 15 years ago when it was center lane drive, kick it out to the wing, shoot from the top of the circles from the wide ice, and then hope for a rebound, and everybody crashes the net. Like, yeah. There's so much east-west play now where, hey, if the puck gets turned over where, I, you know, I feel like years ago they would, you would have been sitting on the bench for the rest of the game. But they have the ability to try that now. And, like, every shot is they're hoping for a great A in the slot. You're not having wasted the shots from the boards. Like, they're like, these don't go in anymore. Yeah, you can't you know? score from the boards anymore. Yeah. And the goalies, their rebound control is so good that it's 
it's just a wasted play. Right. I just remember training camps, first two days of training camp for, I mean, it was center lane drive, kick out shot. Center lane, there, there'd be just a pile of snow in the crease. The POP, the pass <laughs> off the pad. Pass pad. You got to shoot to the far pad. <laughs> it's not anymore. There's, Don't hit a stick. No, now, now you watch the training camp and it's drop and cut and the guy ends up ripping it from the slot. It's a lot different, but that's where they're getting them in the games. Or they still even let them pass it to the back door and that's when the goalies just throw their hands up in the air. They're like, okay, this is a great drop. And that's happening in the games too. <laughs> it's, it's nuts. Well, how about even Kirill? Think of the spot he likes to shoot from. He's on the goal line. I mean, he the fact that that's like his Ovechkin spot where he's basically parallel with the net, either shooting off of a helmet or I don't even know what window he sees. I mean, that, that just shows you the skill level today. I mean, the snot bubble kind of, I mean, there's so much stuff happening. I, I do think you said it in the Philly game carts, like, we're going to get to the point where we're going to need those ugly goals, you know. And uh, did you think there should have maybe been a fight in that Philly game after we were down two? I don't. I don't know. We I'm, do not have a major. We have no majors. Not had a fight, like, and maybe that's good. It is good because because we're not taking penalties. And I mean, the Philly game was a little weird, but um, everything in my DNA was like. I was wait. I was like this. I sent you a text. I'm like, the violence is coming against Philadelphia. This is going to be an old-fashioned gong show hockey game. And uh, even though the one guy was running around a little bit from Philly, banging up X nose, I mean, it wasn't – really, they just aren't playing that way anymore. It's, maybe Hines has told them, hey, I don't want to trade a Felino for a Lawton. You know, that's not good math for me, and stay out of the box. For me, what I think it is, probably more than anything, is it illustrates like, how much Marcus Felino influences this team. I think with his with his injury, he's been physical, so he's coming back. We should talk about this for a minute too before we get to it. But it, I think people don't realize how long it actually takes to feel one hundred percent after an injury. Like your your doctor says, you're cleared to play eight weeks later. You're cleared to play. That doesn't mean that you're anywhere near being like one hundred percent. And there's still like a breakdown. Like there's a relationship between your mind and your body. And when you have an injury, that relationship is fractured. And it takes time to rebuild the trust. So, like, your brain doesn't trust your body anymore. Like, it, it failed on it. So your brain's like, I don't trust this body. Like, is it, can I do it? Can I, can I do the things that I want? Like, it let me down. And it takes time to rebuild that trust again. So you got to go out. You, you've got to play. You've got to play against the big guys and handle it and see how it responds. And you got to wait a day. It just takes a little bit of time. And that's happening, I think, with Jared Spurgeon, too. So the way that Marcus has played, it's been physical. Like, if you even look at his hits, it's gone one to two, maybe a no-hitter the first game, the second game, then all of a sudden four, then maybe a statement seven. And now for the first time, what we saw in the Philly game was Marcus really get angry, right? And and that's a component, an element to his game that makes him effective in why he's been a staple in the league for a long time. He's good at it. We haven't seen it yet. And I think that's because the relationship between mind and body was broken. He's starting to trust it. Now it's starting to come. And without Marcus being the guy, because – in role players too, they know the moments and the guys to talk to. There is a skill to that. I think we've talked about this on the podcast. Some guys just don't get it or they're afraid. They don't want to. And the moment might be there and they're like, oh, I didn't see it. What happened? You know, right. some guys know. Marcus is one of the guys that knows. And if he's letting those moments go by, there's a reason for it. You know, and um, I think he's starting to feel good. He's starting, things are starting to come along. And I think you'll see him drag other guys from this roster into the fight a little bit too. But no majors to me, I think, is an eye opener because they played well. They've been really good. Now, they haven't had to get dirty, ugly goals. They haven't had to play with some sandpaper because it's been pretty. But there is a day that's coming, and um, it's probably sooner rather than later. That was a, that was a filibuster. I liked it. I like, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to take it all in. I think Moose is That's, a, that's Mo Sober October right there. <laughs> no, that's my it, God. That's what happens. <laughs> that was incredible. When he was talking was about poetic. When he was talking about your body not trusting your mind, mind and all I could think of was, like, I feel like that all the time. Disconnected. I've never been connected yeah. in my whole life. But I will say on Moose, so it was funny. Being down in Florida as a fan, uh, You, it's weird because you're in this – part of the city where you just see players walking around you'll see flurry going to dinner with his parents or whatever so it's, it's almost like being in this weird disney world right because there's people mixed together and uh you can see moose he really is a he plays this interesting role with the guys where um 
he's obviously a leader. He wears a letter, but he he seems to be a guy that um, I think he got the chain after the Panther game. Even um, he he's just a he is a guy that brings people into the fight. And even if he's you know statistically, you're still trying to figure out where he's at. Um, he just seems like if it was a if they were a military platoon, that's the guy that is carrying people out of the jungle and. Um, I mean, he is a foxhole guy. Uh, there's just something because he's got kind of the Disney prince. He's this giant man. But then when you get an angry moose, you better look the hell out because that is uh, I just think he's such a key piece to this. Even Garen, remember, we would ask him, who are you most like as a player? And he would say Felino, and back in his career. And there's just something about he's a total intangible. Like, I don't think if you were in arbitration or trying to figure out what he is, I just think he's off the sheet. Yeah, you you can't is, figure out. Which is why, I mean, he makes good money for his production. That's I, why. But you can't even figure out exactly what he's giving, but it's so many different things. He's a huge piece of this. And if he keeps getting stronger and, and the trust keeps growing, I mean, it's it could be interesting. It was a great tip, great game against Philly for him with a couple goals. Now, what's your what's your – did you have a core muscle injury? No? No, I didn't have any core muscle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to have a core muscle, to have a <laughs> core muscle injury. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was Felino's injury technically? What I, th- was I think it's the core muscle, the uh the the ab, you know what I mean? The hernia? Okay. Sports uh, hernia. Yeah, so that leads that whole Yeah, that's a tough one to come back from. I mean that's Yeah. But how, what was yours? The knee? Is that the worst injury you had, your knee? Uh yeah, probably when I got stepped on it. Yeah. How long did that take? A year. It takes oh, a yeah. long yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, and it's... But how long was it before you were able to, like, skate again? Uh, Probably about eight months. But I, it's the stuff that you, like you talk about, being nervous about. Even just getting ready to go out for a game, you know, you're in the locker room putting your helmet on, a guy comes up behind you and, you know, gives you a tap on the back of the leg and it hits you right, right where my surgery was. You know, when you go, you go down, like, it, it hit your nerve and it put you down, like you see sometimes with players yeah. on the ice when they block a shot. Yeah. So you're getting ready for a game yeah. and, you're, you know, you're putting your helmet on, you got your back to the locker room. You know a guy's coming up behind, he's going to hit you on the leg, but he hits you in that spot and it's like, God damn it. Don't not there, you know what I mean? And, and, and so you're just <laughs> no, ready to go. Like, okay, now here, here we go again. Yes, yeah. Let's get him. But uh, no, I had never had uh, any abdominal stuff like that. Just some head stuff. But it's uh, yeah, trying to come back and you're playing at the highest level. It's not like everybody's going to go down and condition in the American League and you know get a few games down there and come back and feel confident. You're jumping right into the best league in the world and trying to keep up is not easy at all. So Kinger. One thing that's critical to getting healthy again after injuries is, is quality nutrition. I know you know a thing or two about quality nutrition. That's what I'm <clears throat> known for, um, <laughs> uh, as you can tell. I uh, I mean, I am not well. I, I got to put a stretch together uh, where I'm eating mostly Jimmy's products here after this road trip I've been on. I would start with their caramel dip because we're almost out of the kind of core caramel season flannel shirt pull the wagon for halloween full-size candy bar at your house show people that you're in the right tax bracket and get some caramel dip from jimmy's walk into your grocery store look for the apples you're going to see a big thing of caramel dip you can put it on anything al you could make caramel uh, nachos you could slice thinly slice some apples put them on a little cookie tray a little bit of caramel on there I mean, there's nothing better. Minnesota company, these guys are awesome. Don't you be messing with my dressing. I'm back. I feel like I'm back. I feel like I'm moose right now. Like I'm, I'm starting to trust myself. People are gravitating. Hopefully this, you. hopefully this podcast is like two hours, and I'm really good in the last half hour. That's my best shot. I can't even speak right now. And uh, transition to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had his guy. Uh, well, I need to share my experience with Aquarius Home Services. Man, I tell you what, they, uh, they've they done a good job ensuring just a worry-free water situation for me, handling all my plumbing, electrical needs. They've made everything uh, in my house uh, worry-free for sure. And as winter approaches, their dedication to keeping uh, my furnace running, uh, it gives me peace of mind. And what sets Aquarius apart is their commitment to being a local family-owned business. They prioritize their customers, offering transparency, upfront pricing, and respect for your home and time. I highly recommend Aquarius. Uh, you can reach them at AquariusHomeServices.com. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Aquarius, earning the right to be recommended. And I love, I still love how they respect the house when they come over. They put the booties on, they come in, uh, they, they show you the iPad, no work before they talk to you about pricing, everything from top to bottom. Love the experience. Great taglines. Earn the right to be recommended strong. 
don't you be messing with my dress and strong. I mean, those are core attributes in, as a marketing person. Those are both brands got it pretty dialed. Can we do a little love fest on the wild early? Just some salutations. Um, I don't know if that means compliments or greetings, but uh, just random stuff. Does anybody find the net better with a shot than Bogosian? This guy, the low heater that somehow gets to the net, even if there's 50 people in front. I mean, I've just been loving Aquaman, just post up and fire one. He's another guy. I don't think we know. I mean, high pick. You know, he's he's a vet, but he's he's an int- he can go low. He can get the puck to the net. I mean, I got that one there. Uh, I love uh, Lauko. Has been fun to watch. I think the fan base is starting to get a kick out of him I thought it was interesting when Moose said he's got the dog in him and gave him the chain I mean he's clearly a guy uh that doesn't mess around and and also sitting on my phone wild off to a hot start this was I think before the Philly game or right after just going on NHL.com and at that time Karel Kaprizov was the leading scorer in the NHL he's been passed now but um I mean what this has just been awesome I mean, I uh, I know the Philly game got away from us, but um, this is what we wanted. And now we go into this Pittsburgh game, which has some of the elements of the Columbus game, right? You got Flower, last start in Pittsburgh. There's going to be emotions and pageantry, and you got to get in and get out a little bit like the – just get in and get get the points, you know, and and ride that wave of emotion and and make it happen and get back home. I mean that that's a this is a big game too. I think to respond as a goalie, Al, like, flowers in for sure. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think last year he it was. I think they had a back to back Pitt and Boston, or I don't know if it was a back whatever it was. And yeah, they, they didn't Boston. play him and they yeah, took. They didn't heat. play him in Pitt. Yeah. yeah, and then he went out and fired a bullet in Boston. He was great, but he had said he didn't want to play in Pitt. And who who knows the if that was the truth or not? But he says he doesn't like he didn't like playing there. Any buildings that you didn't like playing in? Well, God, he played there how many games? Well, maybe he liked Mellon Arena more. Maybe not. It's not as a guest. Like maybe just not as a yeah, as a right. visitor. He doesn't like it. Like it feels um, weird, or he's distracted because his old teammates or something. You know? No, I mean there was there was no every building in the NHL is great to play in. Um, there's certain ones that you're like really, you know, like Vegas. You know, you're looking at the schedule and you're like, "Oh, I'm playing Vegas." <laughs> of all the games, yeah, yeah, I'll play all 80 years. You're gonna pick Vegas. You're gonna take Vegas because I'd like to like, see the craps table. Yeah, you're gonna really Nashville. <laughs> okay, you know. Um, so who's there, picking there these? City. Do I, I would say there was my, more. Do I have to talk to my goalie partner? Is he taking these ones <laughs> yeah. off? I'm so, so you played in Montreal, City. Nashville, and Vegas usually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, New York. Yeah. <laughs> uh, perfect. Yeah. L.A. No, there's no. I, there wasn't a building. I, I wasn't. Uh, you know, able to call if I didn't like playing that building or not. And um, they're all fun in their own way. But uh, I think it's more so city, you know, um, whether it's a back to back or whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, you get stuck in sometimes there's tough spots. And that's just, that's how the league plays out. You have a lot of games in a short amount of time. And, um, you know, some games are, you know, tougher than others. What's most impressive to you about like his numbers? I, I can't really understand. Like how impressive it is what he's done, like over a thousand games, five hundred right. X number of wins, like to be that good for that long. Like what's impressive to you? I, the game's played it, I think, is just incredible. The way he plays, it's not like he plays a conservative game, you know. He's he's always been even when he was younger, he was so aggressive, athletic, and he never dealt with a ton of injury, you know, which is, you know, pretty impressive. And for a goalie to play that many games and that many years, and you go through the, the goaltending position, probably in his career, he's probably changed like three well, different the, times. Like you know, you like s- the style you're talking. Yeah, it's amazing. He like, went from Dominic Dominic Hasek through J. S. Jaguar into like I don't even know who's today's goaltender. Like it would be Shesterkin or something. I don't know, but like it's different. Yeah, it, it was. You start. You know, he was athletic. You remember watching when he was young. Um, you know, he's all over the place. You still remember the way he won the cup. He was diving overhead first to make that save, and then. The league goes into now you're starting to play down on the post and you're doing this VH style like Jaguar, whatever it may be. That was the next big thing. Now it's the reverse VH. He's had to go through like three different transitions as a goalie, right. you know, in, in his time in the NHL. And to be able to adapt to all of them and go from a league that was, you know, a, a shot, a shoot and follow type league, play out a rebound, to now east west. And sometimes it's going through the seam like two or three times before these guys shoot. It's, it's amazing that, uh, 
he's had the ability to adapt to, to the different games, the different styles, and the, the talent level is just insane. So what, like, what does a goalie need to be able to do that? Like just athleticism or intelligence, like track? No, I think it's, it? a lot of it's upstairs. Like you got to think the game. It, it's there's so many goalies that you've gone with through your whole career. You know, going back to college, you're in uh, American League, whatever level it may be. And you see all these guys, the, the size, the talent they have, and the skill level. You're like, how is this guy not in the NHL? He's, you know, he's six six. He's he got the perfect body, but. Then you watch a little bit when uh, when the game's going on, and sometimes they just might not see the game very well or understand, you know, where the next threat is. But I think the guys that play a long time, it's, you see it in New York too with Jonathan Quick. He's been unbelievable, and you know, at his age and the, game, the changes he's had to make to his game, it's. Uh, I think a lot of it's upstairs to be able to think the game. Does Flower have uh, one of your sticks in his collection? Is that? Yeah, has to. I imagine. Is yeah. that true? You, so what was tell us a story about how so playing, this is his a thousandth game is this you're, he, you're you're playing him uh, or at one point in time and you asked your equipment guy like hey th- I know this will be weird when Mark Andre Fleury asked for my stick um, yeah it might have been in uh, it might have been in Vegas because I knew their equipment manager really well Critter and I uh, I I've, I always wanted to play with Flower it was like one guy I was like got to be so fun to play with him in a locker room and. Uh, I wanted to get his stick, but uh, I also figured he'd probably ask back, you know? <laughs> well, so I would I, think. I don't know if he ever did ask back. <laughs> no, I think. Do you I have th- a flower stick? I do. Tony got one for me. Yeah. yeah. Styles, of course. I think yeah. with flower, too, through. his, uh, he's got, the, I mean, physically, you talk about core muscle. I think his whole body is a core muscle. He's basically like a Cirque du Soleil character, right? Even at his age. And, and then the joy of the game. I, this guy is so nice, and, I mean, he's he's a superstar. He has fans almost, even when we didn't play him in Pittsburgh last year. He has, like, Taylor Swifty. There's, there's a whole internet flower world of people that love him, and he's just – anybody on the street comes up to him. You know, uh, little old ladies in Minnesota are in love with Marc-Andre Fleury. He's just he's, – he's, 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 he's like Charlie Chaplin. He's an artist – He's really special, and he loves the game like a little kid. It's interesting with the Pittsburgh thing because I think I think it's about playing there before. Like you said, it's like going back and TPing your old house that you raised your family, and it's weird, right? And so I think, and even with Sid coming at him and all the different things, so I think that's probably, I think it's complicated for him to go into that place and try to dominate, right? It's just a different world. So it'll be very interesting to see how he deals with all the, pomp and circumstance and there's nobody better than flower to be a pro about it and i would love to steal two more points and stay on this heater that we're on well he's got to go back to pittsburgh and imagine all the people that you know want to grab dinner with them that everybody you know, want to get take it's not an easy game and now it makes sense it's not an easy game for him to go back and you know do all the whatever it may be the visits to stop by see i'm sure he's you know with ex-teammates kids and um i'm sure maybe even his own family's going out to watch the game and uh yeah they are they're going out yeah so it's it's just a lot to it it's almost a whole event and you wish it was just a game but you know the, his career and what he's done there it can't you be just a game and you can't because it's on it, it needs this game too right no i, I know it's the last kick of the can for some of those guys i know sid just signed a new deal but Right, they're not getting they're, younger. No, no, they're all thirty-seven years. They old. They didn't get off to a great start. Right, no, it's uh, no, it's a big game for both sides. But it, you know, for him, it's uh, there's a lot more that goes into it than just a regular prep for uh, for a normal game. But, but you know what? I, what makes great great What's is that? their ability to be good in that in these right. spots. Right, you know, like they know when and and they can fire a bullet when they absolutely need to, uh, and that's what I'll be watching for. You know, the ability. You'll to have turn a thousand off. excuses as to why he shouldn't play well and they'll all be valid but if he plays well that's when you're like that dude's great you know and he's a team guy too it's funny i was watching this uh there's a really good red sox documentary about the comeback against the yankees and they all shaved their head the year before uh, but johnny damon did not shave his head and it was funny watching kevin millar was like well of course you didn't because you're a rock star and you've got this great hair and then you contrast that with Flurry's McLovin outfit for Halloween. As I understand it, he went in there and hacked up the the bangs and got it all set. I mean, this is a first ballot Hall of Famer that's rolling down to some barber shop, being like, "Hey, I need to be on the podium the McLovin. for the Halloween costume." <laughs> like, I I am. This is what we do. I, I got to show up to this party and put a strong effort in. And I mean, it's 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 pretty great. Uh, I'm so happy we got this. 
I mean, this flower phase um, at the end of his career. I think it's great for Gus. Uh, should be good for Volstead as well. And uh, I hope he just, I hope he does an artist, uh, puts a little one of one in the corner on Tuesday night against Pitt. He's going to be able to do whatever he wants after hockey, but let's not hope he's in the uh, analyst booth for the Minnesota Wild or the radio booth for the San Jose Sharks. So <laughs> Nine how's that going now? Yeah. Uh, it's been good. Uh, three games. Uh, got lucky and got to go to Dallas, Chicago, and then finish up with Winnipeg. But uh, it was good uh, cities to start in. You didn't uh, forget learn the passport? From a, learn from a, no, I didn't. No, but I checked it. It was like having your plan – you don't move it around so much, but all of a sudden now on the other side, I'm, I moved it like seven different times. You know, like, yeah, I'm not going to forget it here. I'm not going to forget it here. And then sure enough, you get on the flight to Canada and you can't remember where you put it. And I was like, God dang it. <laughs> you put it in a tiny little zipper in your backpack that you'll never find, you know? Um, but it was good. I got, you know, a ton of help from uh, Dan Rusinowski who's been in the booth for the Sharks since day one for them. So he's... Uh, day one? He's seen it all. Yeah, he's seen it all. He's still got all the stats, the books from uh, every game he keeps. It's uh, it's incredible. You could throw out... He's like one of those guys you could throw out any game. He'll remember the score, who scored, what... Yeah, like who took a penalty, who fought. It's 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 incredible. Wow. He'll remember it. Yes, yes, yes. The, the, the TV, we went out to dinner one night in Chicago, and uh, we were at the TV crew as well, and they were talking about a game, and he was kind of overhearing what they said. And they're, he's like, are you talking about the 4-3 game at the Cow Pals? <laughs> you know, and, and I was like, "Holy cow, he doesn't miss a thing!" And uh, yeah, sure enough, they were they were he was spot on. Do you have any analysts you think are you look up to in the league that you think do a nice job? You know, in a similar role. Yeah, a guy sitting to my left. <laughs> <laughs> we what? turn his games on every night. What is your style game. though? What do, what do you what do you try to? What's your? I, I got to watch you when you're on there. What's your style like? What's your? Uh, what do you try to do when you're in that role? Because it's a. I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> um, it's you know when you first hear your voice for the first time, like play back through, you think you sound like weird. You hate your own voice. Yeah. And I don't know if that's for everybody or what, but I just you know like I'm like texting, like people are texting, oh you sound good. I'm like no seriously though, you just you sound stupid, right? You know. <laughs> just um, telling the truth could be nice. Yeah, you listen to I, I mean I listen to Sirius XM. I listen to a lot of radio and. Um, whether it's like morning shows or at night of Sirius, Sirius XM, like yesterday I'm listening to a ton of football games and, um, it's fun listening to good, uh, like broadcasts. I, I enjoy it, you know, especially radio when you can't watch it. Um, but no, I haven't really keyed in on one that I really like. Um, but what's, that, what's the hardest part prep? Like how's your prep going? Prep was Prep was good. We were only three or four games in the season, so it didn't take a ton of work. But it, it you don't know how much you got to prep for, so right. you, you over I over prepped, yeah. you know, and then you kind of learn what what you need to really look at. But uh, yeah, the, the the prep is uh, you know a lot of work trying to figure out uh, what you want, where you're gonna go, and that's kind of something we go with early with Dan. We can say like, hey, is there anything tonight? You know, like milestones or yeah. so you kind of can pre- prepare for that stuff. But uh, like for example, when we were in Winnipeg, it was Hellebuck there on in Hellebuck. They had the uh, the Vesna in the building, and then the trophy, the Jennings, I think, is for at least goals against. So the, both trophies were in the building, and they were, uh, they are honored him before the game. So we had uh, got to do some homework and lead up and come up with some numbers for his last couple of years and um, stuff like that. But it's uh, it'll be interesting to jump back in the next games in January. So you don't know where the season's going to go. You don't know who's going to be healthy. I know they're hoping to get you know a lot of their captain back and there's oh, a bunch really? of storylines. Yeah, it's just uh, you know Celebrini was out when I was on the trip, so. Yeah, you're already dealing with stuff that, you know, is unexpected for them. Yeah, so does that mean Couture is potentially coming back? Uh, that's what they're hoping for, yeah. Oh, good. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man, that'd be tough, though. Like, it's a rep business. You know, right. The yeah. more you do, the, the, the better you get at it, but you got to get volume. Yeah, you know? it's uh, – yeah, it, it got better game to the game. Um, obviously, when, you know, a game gets lopsided, it gets a lot harder, and you don't have a ton to talk about. And, uh, you know, if unfortunately that happened in Winnipeg, and you, that's where you need to be prepared with a lot of material and – you know, have plenty to talk about. Well, maybe silver December leading into that January game <laughs> might be it might be helpful. Yeah, you could float through the wall like the monks. Just get just get transcendent. That's what. Yeah. I would. Well, I got this. I got this tooth deal too, so I had to go on TV in between the second and third, and I got this this chipped tooth. I got to get fixed. What so happened? I, I it actually happened first day of training camp last year in Anaheim, so I knew it wasn't going to be a great start to the year. It was like first drill of training camp. It was a it was a high shot. It was a deep shot that got tipped in front, so I was just going to reach for it, smoke me in the mask, crack my tooth. And I still haven't gotten it fixed. I went to the dentist, and I laid back in the chair, you know, set a two hour block to get this thing fixed. And uh, he's like, "Let's uh, 
let's do a little whitening on those things, and then we'll come back in a couple weeks. So I'm in the process of, or process, whatever you want to say. Oh, because he's going to match it? Yeah, we're going to match. I got some fake ones on the other side, and so there's going to be, I think, some work that's going to go into this. Who tipped it? You remember who got you? No, I don't don't remember. Zegris, probably. Dude, is no, there... he was holding out last year. Oh. That's a two-hour full butt fl- clench in the dentist chair. <laughs> <laughs> How tiring are you? Uh, like you wouldn't think that actually... the, you wouldn't think that the dentist would be the greatest <laughs> workout of the summer, but it is. It's a full flex, hands tight, sweat butt underneath yes. the legs. <laughs> when Low I got back a... sweat, yeah. back of the knees sweating, everything. Yes. Yeah, it's not good. I hate I the dentist. Bu- I hate the dentist. Too. I flake on appointments. Try to be- <laughs> I'll have an appointment and just not go. <laughs> oh, my god! Just because it is. You were the one that pointed out to me, if you're ever at the dentist, <laughs> at some point realize what you're doing with your hands. And I was like, oh, my God, it's so true. And the last time I was there, when I got off the chair, there was sweat yeah. on the, where the legs were. <laughs> I thought it was a meat sweat thing, no, but I guess it was a dentist sweat thing, which is... Uh, Speaking of meat sweats... Uh, what, what if if we're looking for a, a good fall burger, where would we go? I would probably head over to Cub. Uh, they have them in uh, South St. Paul, I believe. I don't know if that's true, but um, it could be true. And I would probably go over and get a, uh, what is it called, a Cub Pub Burger. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, they're good. They got flavors in there. They got, like, the jalapenos in there, the cheese. They're easy. You know, I, I struggle a little bit on the grill from time to time. I've had some mishaps. I've had to go back to the grill. I've, you know, microwave is in play, maybe tenting with the foil. But these are burgers you basically can't screw up. Go get them kind of. The, we've been getting a little bonus summer here in Minnesota. I would go yeah, get 70 something. degrees the next couple of days. Yeah. It's Fire been, that grill up. Fire it up. Get over to Cub. Get loaded up. Maybe get some chips. Get some uh, coleslaw. And just pretend it's July. Yeah. And we're on a heater. The wild, we're warming our hands on the wild start here. Head over to your neighborhood grocer at Cub. Wash it down with a nice honey crisp because it is fall still. Yep. You got to get those. Yep. Great price at Cub. And when you're watching the wild game, you can pick up your bush lights there too. You can. Great deal on bush lights all the time. I wouldn't know. Are you a bush light guy? No, I'm not. Bush light okay. does have know. NAs though. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I do know that. Yeah. Hey, fellas, are you into dainty bites? I'm not into dainty bites either, especially when it comes to to my treats. I like big treats, like T-Rex cookie treats, seven-inch monsters. T-Rex cookies, it's not just like eating a treat. It, it, it's an experience. And you can find this experience at every wild home game. And if, if you can't make it to the game, well, then you can go to Cub Foods and find one of their freezer packs. Or you can go down to their store location in Egan and get yourself, well, some cookies to bring home and bake, or some ready-made for you. Seven-inch monsters. Like I said, it's an experience. T-Rex cookie, no dainty bites. I think you asking for an N.A. beer at the Drunken Taco in Fort Lauderdale is more impressive than Gus's goalie goal. It's groundbreaking. It's, it's, it's a unicorn. <laughs> it will never happen again. Al, you're into a new house, man. Um, how, how are things going? You feel confident in, like, your foundation and the roof and everything? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, actually, now I do because it only took me a week to flood the place when I moved in. But uh, I, I feel really, really confident now that it's done. What happened? Uh, we had uh, – it was Simon's birthday, and uh, I was carrying gas cans over to uh, the garage, and I was in a rush. Um, which is which is a shocker because I feel like I'm just nonstop rush. But I had one like three gas cans, two on one arm and, and one on the other, and I didn't realize it, but gas was pouring out of one can all down my leg. And so when I went back in the house, I threw all my laundry in the laundry uh, tub and started it. And I put soap in there, and I was gonna you know sit and turn it off, but our hot water came out at like an ounce a minute. So I walked away. You know I'll be like, oh, I'm gonna go shower and. I, and I ended up forgetting about it. And then I forgot about it because <laughs> my son had a baseball game. So I went to the baseball game, stood through a baseball game. And my wife was at dance and then came to the baseball game. And then the best part about the baseball game no, this, is when uh, there's no best part my of wife this. took off with the kids. And I stood there for our co- end of the game coaches meeting in the tailgate of my truck. Is we open, you unzip the Yeti cooler and you crack the first beer <laughs> yep. to discuss kind of, you know, obviously yeah. nine new baseball. There's recap. a ton of stuff that you go over you analytics recap. and all that. The safety meeting, I think, the, the young parents. Saber metrics, whatever you call it. So, you know, the coaches, we gather around, we get inside the Yeti, and I just did my first of an NA Bush Light, and I, I didn't have my ringer on because I'm on the bench coaching kids. Yeah, because it's. And I'm focused on. Mm-hmm. 
So I checked my phone. I had four missed calls from my wife and a text that said, get home ASAP. And I'm like, oh, my God, someone broke into the house. And so I call her. I said, what's going on? And she says, there's water everywhere. Get home. And I'm thinking, like, what happened? <laughs> you know? And uh, then I found out I left the laundry tub running. Did you deny? Did you think? Oh, I knew right away. Did you, but did you think about? I'm talking about. I remember it right away. With the wife, though, did you think about? What was about that moment denying? like? It, not good. You talk about sweat in a dentist chair behind your legs and knees. My sweat level on the way home was uh, at all time high. And my, got parents, a my parents that were actually wasn't... over, too, because they went to help with the kids. So I went over there and shop vacs were running when I pulled in. You've got a hybrid and. It was all gas the whole way home. Yeah, there was zero miles to uh, electric. electric on that. <laughs> That's a tough story. That's maybe That's a like story a- keep, like with the Sharks organization, maybe just kind of <laughs> bury that one. Everybody's, I mean, it's found out through everybody. Like, it's not something. Like, when you come into our house for the last, like, three months and you have cardboard down the middle of the hallways and there's wood piled up and there is, what happened here, you know? like Did you win the baseball redo- game? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. We had to have they. They had a good year, so that's good. Yeah, not even that day, one win, one loss. Yeah, that's that's. Well, yeah. Now I'm I'm really happy with the foundation of the house. Now, now he's confident. Everything's he's confident. done, so now it's time to, uh, you know, get the water running again. Well, I do know that some storms ripped through your area, mm-hmm. and uh, if there is any doubt, and like, I know you have water anxiety now. <laughs> if there's any doubt, and you don't, you want to keep that place bone dry with yeah. a good roof, you should uh, you should check out Wild Construction because they do a great job. It's probably a I little wish I knew now. a little late right now for right. them to be able to replace your roof before snow flies. Nobody wants to be on a on a slippery roof, but you have up to 12 months to have that looked at. Uh, so uh, go on their website. They've got a bunch of research tools to see if you were within an area that was hit with a storm on the dates. Uh, and then you give them a call. They'll get somebody on your roof. They'll assess the damage, and uh, who knows? They'll maybe uh, maybe you're in line for a new roof. So, uh, Wild Construction, uh, give them a look. Wildconstruction.com. They'll make it happen. I'm just trying to figure out how I can botch the whole roof. <laughs> what I could do? Maybe a gas, like a oil fire, when I'm in charge of cooking dinner for the kids or something. <laughs> that that is an impressive like to set up an ad read with that story. Like you had that holstered, <laughs> and he starts with just the random gas can part. Which didn't come into play. It felt fiery, really. didn't it? That was a bit of a no, but like it was. Uh, that was almost like you trying to give yourself an alibi, like being rushed with the gas cans, and but you just left the water. They off. weren't my gas cans. That's the problem. So that okay, goes yeah, back to this. Okay. So in the move, I couldn't find my gas cans, and okay. I thought the whole time okay. it was my brother. Got because, it. Because I, I wasn't it. home when we actually moved, so I thought my brother took my three like eight gallon gas cans and put them in his truck, and then kept the. The can, so I couldn't find him, but I just found him in the bottom of the last Gaylord in our garage. I finally found him, so I found the gas cans. But the original gas cans I was moving was the old owner, and they were a little like one gallon. They leaked. It was. It wasn't that, that played what's into what's it. What's a Gaylord? It's a big uh, cardboard box, probably like a four by four, where they're like four. They're like four cardboard thick, and that's what they moved our stuff in in our oh. house. I feel like it's knowing a, what a Gaylord is is manly. That was like the richest thing he's ever said. <laughs> no, I think that's a blue collar. I just thing. no, it's I, that's I, a when blue they collar move. Thing. I'm a My day and stuff. a half. I'm a day and a half into sober. <laughs> yeah, into soberness and yeah. it's starting to come to yeah, it's clarity. It's coming. working. I know. It's I amazing. think a Gaylord's a blue collar. Fact though, right? That's not a know. rich fact, is but it? But he that's said like when a... they moved my stuff. Okay, yeah. They well, no, that. and that's not they. It was more so uh, like <laughs> my wife and my parents were, hey, were forced to guys, uh, put stuff in. Uh, is, this leading, fans, is this leading into a next the, segment? Well, you, no. Do but you the have AAA movers? Or the what? fans should know that. <laughs> The fans should know this too. Al was a cornerback, so he's got a good back pedal. That's what he's working on right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. I'm was not it all state? Pedal. Were you all state? No, no, I was not all state. No, you were a D back. Some type of honorable mention. No, I was an all state long snapper, but yeah, I was D back. <laughs> That's good. I had to long snap. What are you coaching now? Uh, squirt hockey. Okay, where? and archery and S- still water and okay. archery. No, I'm not doing. I've only sat like once, but I need to start sitting more. So you're coaching a, a pony team. Correct. Yeah. What level? Squirt. Like a squirt. squirt. What? Oh, B. Nice. How How do you like the squad? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, we got a great group. That's, great that's, group. A great group of dads <laughs> and a, and a great group of kids. That's um, good. Yeah. Good families, as they say in tryouts. Yeah. Good family. Right. Um, I want to. So I've been noticing Heinz has been doing this stuff with uh, duos, right? So he he's and I've heard this before, where he's got Kirill and Zuki seems to have Boldy and Eck, and they're kind of trying other people with them. You th- that seems like a pretty tasty model if you can get two guys 
doing the ESP thing between each other, and then you can kind of figure out that third guy. Is that is that something that uh, does that seem like a good recipe heading in? I mean, it seems to be working. It's so funny you bring that up because we had a scrimmage last night, Squirt B, okay. <laughs> up in Andover, <laughs> this and I gonna, hated the way we played. So you're gonna we, put we, together we off, So uh, yes, I I got home, I, I ate dinner from uh, Quinny's and. Montemita, by Montemita, who has pilot games in there, I noticed. And uh, I called the assistant coach, and I'm like, I'm, I'm making lines. I, I need lines for tomorrow. And what I did is I paired kids. I wanted pairs together up front. So you guys got a game today? Because No, no, not. We don't have games for a while. But I want to get kids playing together because we've done. Kids have been playing forward. Kids have been playing D. We see who likes playing D, who plays forward. But I told him, I said, I want. I'm putting these two together, these two together, and these two together up front. Can I give you a thought? It's so amazing. I think it's pair and smother. Because you also need a smother line, like the Felino. You need, because when you think of that group, you don't think of two guys. You think of like this is like the pillow over the face line, yeah. and then we got the Paris. You have a smother group. So we only have three lines at squirt level. So I think yeah, we'll have two. Would you say the what are the first lines called? The, the duos. Line? The duos. So we got two duos, and then I think yeah, we'll potentially have a smother line. It's tough to do with three lines. Give yeah. me give me the couple guys you're putting together, just first names. No, I mean, no. You can't throw one of the books. No, no. <laughs> they say he's they're too young. Yeah, they're, 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 he wants to keep the dads happy. They're 10 or 11 years old, and we got to, we're already on. But, uh, I mean, it seems to be working, right? Eck and, Eck and Boldy, and obviously the uh, the brothers from another mother, Kirill and Zuki. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's – you're just looking for two things that have chemistry, and then you're trying to find a, a third element. You know, think of, I don't know, your pancakes, right? You got your pancakes, you got your syrup. Sometimes you want chocolate chips. Sometimes you want blueberries. Like, you need a third element. You can switch it up, and it only changes the dish. But pancakes and syrup always go together. That's kind of what it is, right? And I think he's looking for that. And it's this roster seems easy. You know, it's Ak and Boldy. Who wouldn't pair up with Ak? That's in the NHL. Everybody everybody makes makes everybody better. I was just going to say, is there one player in the league that wouldn't pair up great with Ak? No. Maybe maybe some Finn, some evil Finn. No. I don't know. Maybe. He's Swedish. Every, no Ak, Ak makes everybody else better. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's kind of a cheat code. Yeah, he can be paired with anybody. But I, I do love the duos, and uh, I think it's hilarious with the fact that Eck broke his nose when he has lifetime stats on face washes. If if they had that on Hockey DB, no one's been face washed more than him for the rest of the season. We're gonna hear about how they're going after his recently broken nose because that's what, all guys do to him. What if yeah? What if ironically this broken nose leads to his first fight? I don't know if it's because gonna happen. Because now he's the wires are gonna touch because he he doesn't want anybody rubbing it, like face wash him anymore. How it's, long does that sting for? It's never gonna get better because oh, every man, game man. he plays. I mean, the guy elbowed him the other night. Like, I don't see – I think he's going to have that bug in him all year. Dude, I say it's like mine Mine is like – there's like fault lines. <laughs> in your nose? Yeah. So it's – the first <laughs> The first time it broke, it took – it was significant. But then from that point on, it just takes like a flick. Boom. And it's busted again now. Because there's it's like, good to know. There's like fault lines in there from where it was broken before. Like, it, bone doesn't lay down stronger than it was before. Just, but when it comes to Ackman, is there anybody that heals faster than this guy? He's like the Wolverine from X-Men. He just goes home that night and he wakes up the next morning. He's totally good. Or he dead. doesn't even he's look like Deadpool or something. Like you said, no black eyes. Nothing. He doesn't. I can't even and tell. He, had, he, had, he went to the doctor. Like uh, He had surgery. He's yeah. fine. He's fine. Yeah, he couldn't fly because they couldn't stop the bleeding. And then when you see him, he just looks like he's going to get his glamour shot over at Southdale. Yeah. I mean, like, what the hell? I, what is that? I don't know. But you go back to the playoffs a couple of years ago, he breaks his ankle in pit. Remember that? Yeah. Better. And then two days later, he's on the ice skating. How, how, how do you do that? Do you think he sleeps in, like, one of those Hyper- Terrell chambers. Owens chambers or something? No, I think he's Wolverine. I wonder if he only eats superfoods. Or if it's like... He's like a Swedish Wolverine. You think his fingernails grow super fast? Like he cuts them every day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a few more uh, accolades. Because we don't get a stretch like this. So I'm just going to... How about our boy Jake? Uh, six points in eight games. Jake Middleton. Well, oh, you know what else he doesn't have, though? Uh, no mustache. because of Because of his Halloween costume. Dude, it's possible that that duster impedes the vision. Well, oh, that's he, true. When he's looking down at the puck, who knows? He can't tell what's black from the puck and what's black from the stash. But now he's seeing things clearly. What do you do for Halloween? 
He was uh, the guy from, you, what is it called? Groot? Is that his name? Oh, like, Groot. Groot. Oh, like from, a uh, cartoon. Yeah, okay. I'm old, yeah. so I missed the whole minion thing. But uh, he he committed to the bit, shaved off. The, you got to commit to your costume. He, he there went, was good commitment. Yeah, it's McLovin was good. Commitment. Have you seen the video? I love turtles. Yes. Yeah. How good is that? Who was that? That was Hartsy, right? That was Hartsy. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. That was awesome. That's no, a, that, I like. I like. That's turtles. a deep cut. I thought he was the Joker when I saw him, and you were showing me the video at at the bar. And uh, he's good. Can I? I got a Halloween idea that can help Kirill. Okay. You know? So I saw a woman walking across the street yesterday in Boston when I was coming home, and she was dressed as Carilla Deville. What if Ooh. you were Carilla Deville? Yeah, and you just do the hair and the woman's outfit, and your Carilla. Is that different Deville. than the Devil Wears Prada? Uh, the same kind of look, but uh, I think this woman was in uh, Carilla, Carilla Deville. She's in like I don't know Snow White or something. But she's the Dalmatian. Dalmatian woman. Yeah, one, That's who one, needs a Dalmatian. Dal, 101 Dalmatian. She's a like polka dot. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got the black yeah, and right. white hair. Yeah. So imagine we go Carilla Deville for Carill, and then we got Zuki as a Dalmatian. <laughs> Sell it <laughs> on all fours. I mean, they can win. They can win. I know they listen, so they'll probably be checking that out. So I had, uh, I got Middleton. We got to give some love to him. I th- see if I had anybody else that I just want to say good job because that's kind of where i'm at i'm like good job i guess 50 like in life i mean you could do that to bro like you're right? in the grandparent phase of life where everything is positive i'm really happy yeah 15 points for 97 11 for uh boldy i think spurgeon's coming back against Pitt. maybe Took he's out there so that's good uh we just saw hartman out on the ice skating so he's working his way back but um yeah i uh i don't know i just want this to keep going I want I want us to kind of uh, – everybody had sort of lukewarm expectations going into the season. They didn't know what to say. And then watching them practice here and watching the tone, uh, I've liked how they've started. I just I just hope we keep rolling. We, we run into a homestand, a short homestand, with a couple tough games, Tampa and Toronto also coming into the building, and then I think L.A. – on the Tuesday, so uh, it'd be nice to get them home and, and see what happens after this Pittsburgh game. What teams in are do you think are in the West? Let's let's stick with the West mm-hmm. fading, and which teams are getting better? Well, it's funny you say that. I feel like LA is one of those teams. I don't know if they're going to get in, but one team that might be fading. Uh, Utah, I think, obviously is getting better, and they've been that way for like I feel like a year, almost two years. On the upswing, and I think being in Utah helps. They got a crowd that uh, they got an NHL building. They got a crowd they can play in front of. They almost got the Seattle first year, second year kind of thing. Yeah, going where they got fresh start. They all kind of feel rejuvenated. I feel like uh, the ownership there seems great, and it seems like a great spot to play. But the problem is, I think you're going to have five teams in the Central make playoffs. If you, if you look at it, they're very well could five teams in the in the Central that make it. So let's rank the Central quick. Dallas seems to be a cut above. Winnipeg's on a heater. Winnipeg. Third, the year eight and all. Yeah. And then I I have the Wild probably third. And I said that before. For me, Colorado is a fade team. Uh, Nathan McKinnon, I I just don't know how long this dude can put an entire franchise on his back and run with it. Now, I know he's got Makar too, but to me, they're a fade. Uh, And then who else is... Nash and Colorado are waking up from the dead. You got four in a row from the Avs, and you got three in a row from the Preds. Both the Hawks and Utah are in a tailspin right now with four losses for the Hawks and three for Utah. And then there's St. Louis, the X Factor. I don't know what St. Louis is. I don't think they do either. They're middling, but they got better. Man, those offer sheets, We at some point we'll have to talk about this. The, these offer sheets might change the game for a long time now. You look at, I think if you look at the deal that Volstead got, even that's it, that's offer sheet protection. They're they're giving money early now to guys because these teams are right up against the cap. There's nothing they can do, they can't match. They, they were absolutely pinched. And uh, the way that Broberg and uh, all the way Dylan Holloway, yeah, are playing, right? It, it seemed like an absolute win for St. Louis. The thing with those deals is there's risk, you just don't know the player you're getting, like the team that has them. and are they worth the dollar amount that you're about to give them? Well, St. Louis was le- trying to retool, and they just got two pretty darn good pieces uh, without having to put any draft capital or anything into it. You know, like that, that. These two offer sheets might change the game for a while. 
Yeah, I mean Broberg was he's a high pick at Edmonton. And he you know, he's up and he was up and down, but mainly he spent a lot of time in Bakersfield, their American League team, and then forced to jump right in last year in the cup finals. Yeah. You know, and he was unbelievable for him. You know, yeah. he's playing like twenty minutes a night for him. And uh I think he's already got a few goals with St. Louis this year playing heavy he's minutes. He's got like he's got like seven or eight points in yeah. He's got he's a point yeah. per game. Yeah, and then you got Holloway who flies. He can you know, he's a new age NHL guy that just flies. He's got a ton of skill. You saw it last year in the finals with some of his goals. And yeah. You can't they couldn't afford to keep those two. It's like it's and, just and he's a guy that might have potential. Like this is where it was smart from from St. Yeah. Louis. He might have had potential that was unrealized because yeah, you're not getting on a number one PP or playing oh. top six with Connor McDavid. Like they just have those spots are filled. Uh, but yeah, those are those are nuts. But St. Louis better. I, I think they're better. Where they used to be great on D, and I think they left a little to be desired up front. It's kind of switched a little bit. I think they're better up front than on the back end now. Yeah, no, I I agree, and I think they're wanting their skill. Obviously, their skill players to kind of buy in and play like a two hundred foot game and kind of mature a little bit and turn into you know not everybody's going to turn into an Erickson Act, but to commit to both ends of the ice, you know, and not only. Play offense. I think the Thomas injury is a huge blow for them, but uh, yeah, it's gonna hurt. They, they they should have enough depth up front. I feel to uh, kind of stay where they're at right now until he returns. So the five teams in the Central: it's Dallas, Winnipeg, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, and I, I think Utah has the ability to get in there. Colorado, Colorado probably has to be four there. Uh, and he, he got Nashville, who obviously got off to hor- uh, you know horrible start, zero and five, but. So you think I mean, it's possible, catch, right? Colorado and, and or Nashville? Whatever the weird way is, I don't know what it is, but I've looked for years and I've asked, even asked goalie coaches about it or whatever, but it just seems like UC Saro starts the years, every year he starts off slow. And then by the end of the year, he's at like a 9-4 save percentage. Yeah. It's just amazing what, what he does. And I, I think he's, you know, obviously they've won a few now, but, you know, you look in the middle of the year and all of a sudden he's a top goalie in the league after starting 0-5 and giving up how many goals at the beginning of the year. It's just... It's, it's every year, right? And every year he starts slow. I just every year the narrative is... Is it's finally caught up to him. You can't have a five ten goaltender play in the NHL. That's what you hear at the yeah. start of every season. Yeah, but uh, no, he he figures it out, and and I know he's a guy. Just hearing from guys that play with him, he works his ass off, and it's not like he comes into training camp like out of shape and he's trying to catch the game. Like uh, I don't know what it is, and but he uh, maybe it's just seeing live action. I don't know how many games he played in preseason, and maybe they change it where they want him playing five instead of two. You know, to yeah. to get him going and. Um, I guess I didn't recognize how many he played this year, but again, they get off to a slow start. And is it the goaltending? Not, you know, not always, but you know, he probably didn't love his start. And now they're starting to win games. And you know, they had new guys come in the locker room too, which yeah. you know is not easy. A guy Stamkos who's played in the same locker room for 15 years, and now he's got to go to Nashville and figure out where you cut sticks, figure out where the equipment managing room is. You know, what I mean, you got yeah. a lot to figure out. I also think that easy. that group probably looked at the summer transactions and said, "Man, we all of a sudden we're a favorite." Right. You know, and then you show up, and you're like, you still got to earn your points. You mm-hmm. know, yeah, you might look good on paper. Yeah, the central's crazy. It's it's deep. It's nuts. It'll be interesting. To, it'll be interesting to see where it's at at the 40 game mark, and then obviously, you know, when once you get towards the tail end, to see the teams that are fighting for it. You watch that Dustin Wolf in Calgary at all? That goaltender? I do he, a little. He's bit, another yeah. little goaltender. Yep. Little. I mean, he's not little. Was he right. ten or five? Right, right around. Yeah, he's under six foot. I yeah, guess is what under six foot. Yeah, yeah, similar to Saros. Yeah, probably very similar. Yeah, and you just. They both have like unbelievable feet and legs. The way they move is that's the reason, you know, they're they're at this level is how quick they are with their feet and side to side. They're so explosive and yeah. you know it gives them a chance to be in front of every puck. You have any goalie goals in your career? I do. For the, well, I was in Bantam, Bantam. So it, it wasn't you know obviously you wanted one in pro or college would have been a ton of fun when just. We, you know, it was only your mom and dad at the game, but um, still, kind of I tried. I that's tried actually really more hard. impressive that you got one at Bantam. Yeah, I tried. When you really think hard. about it, right? Yeah, because like who in Bantam can get the puck two hundred feet? Well, the, the goalie that's left-handed when he skates out, and when coaches are explaining drills, you're shooting pucks against the glass for twenty <laughs> minutes. They're probably like, God, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully, you know, kids are still doing that, you know, annoying the hell out of coaches and shooting pucks against the glass. But I think it, you're it beneficial too that I was left-handed when I skate out. And I skated out until I was a Pewee, so, you know, I wanted to score a goal whether I was in net or playing forward. Yeah. I, I still think Flower somehow is going to get a goalie goal. I just don't see the season ending without right. him the matching if that. If that happens, that is proof that there are hockey gods. I just I think yeah. he's thinking about it all the time. I think he's working with video coaches. Well, he, he got one in a one-goal lead his last game. He, I know. I thought the same thing. I was like, is it, like at some point. He's going to have to get aggressive with a one-goal lead and try this, too. I, that I, wasn't the time, but it was like, maybe. There's a list I really wanted to get on to because I wasn't getting, getting, 
going to get on any other goalie list, you know, like say career save percentage, career yeah. shutout records, <laughs> career wins, game plays, like Olympic gold, Stanley Cup. I was never going to get on that list, but that the one I could get on was scoring a goal. And it's I, it's that's, quite a list. There are 15 of them. And if it was like the left 15 goalie goals, right? Yeah. Any yeah. of those guys left-handed on that list? I, I don't know. I well, I mean, they all shoot left hand. I don't know if there's any righties. No, they all no. they all catch. They all oh, yeah, catch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but they uh, Brodeur with three. That's incredible. Hey, what was life like? So that I always was intrigued by the uh, the backup goalie. Like, did you go backwards hat or like, what was your vibe? Like hot dog? Like, you know, <laughs> were you interacting with the fans? Like, that seems like a good scene. Like, that's like. That seems really fun. Do you want me to go full cards here and take this for like 12 minutes? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> do it. I could write a book on the backup lifestyle. So my you rookie should. year, you when should. I was in San Jose, my rookie year, what I wanted to do was write a blog. And this was when pizza was in every locker room. Okay, I wanted so you- to write a pizza review blog about visiting rooms pizza. Because there, there were some rinks that had such good pizza, like Nashville. I was always looking forward to it because they had Jets pizza. They still do. Okay, okay. Uh, and whatever it was, Arizona always had unbelievable pizza like it was like thin crust and it had like oregano on it It wasn't just you know like sauce and cheese and uh you know you had to give credit to the rinks that had that really cared about their pizza and i was like who's gonna care about what i write about this pizza you know but who knows it better than the backup goalie god you'd be internet famous right now you were ahead of your but this was after portnoy probably this is 2012 13 area you know portnoy barstool was already big he was probably doing pizza reviews already did you go backwards hat no forwards hat Forward hat, so very responsible. Mm-hmm. Sober October. Okay. Yeah. My grandpa always told me, wear your hat which way you want your life to go. So I always wore it. Oh, wore it you know? That is intense. Yeah. I mean, so I listen, I listen to him. Wear your hat whatever way you want your life to go. Yeah. I mean, that is, that's, that's outstanding. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. So, no, I was, uh, it, it, it was a fun, you had to, know where the game was at, right? It's four nothing game. If the other team's winning, you gotta try to stay focused. And it's not always the easiest when you got like, you know, Tony DaCosta, Michael you get Mike Aldrich, Ricky Brownwell, some of the um great equipment managers that managers that have had, you know, you screw around with them. Yeah. And uh equipment yeah, guys that, seem they, awesome. Yeah. Are they all yeah, cool it, dudes? Like yeah, every equipment guy is like an yeah. awesome are, they live in a they live in a locker room. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. like mechanics of hockey or yeah. something. Yeah. So you see yeah. you, you get to screw around with them all game long and Dude, where does Vancouver rank? Do you, you ever had the pizza in Vancouver? Uh yeah. Here's what? Yes, I don't think have, I ever have because you, it, he always has jerky and su- sushi, sushi all the time. Yeah, you know, I don't know if Vancouver's Vancouver, the best. Yeah, so yeah, one of the rink guys there makes homemade jerky which 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 I've started to do a little bit yeah. and uh but they have yeah, salmon salmon oshi from uh yeah. Miko, Miko Sushi. There'll be a huge spread of sushi in there yeah. post-game. Yeah, post-game. But, um, and then Montreal's different, so interaction with fans. You're sitting in the tunnel. And yeah. It was really cool because they, they know the game of hockey and they had the history there. And you're sitting in the tunnel, but you get hot dogs. In, yeah. In, what are, those, what are they Montreal. called? I can't remember where they come from. I, I don't remember. Have, are they look good? It, look it up. Steamy dogs? Close. I'm not sure if it's steamy dogs or not. It's not a but steamy they dog. are steamy. Dogs. They're good? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just wrapped up in like a little... You know, almost like a um, like a dome dog type yeah, deal. Yeah, okay. but small. And there's probably oh, yeah, a little like, bit of a sweaty bun. Yeah, yeah like so there's like two hundred of like them in the locker. The room. bun was at the dentist with yeah, us. Yeah. What uh? What's the worst pizza? Was there any place you're like, this is just mailing it in? This is brutal, unacceptable rinks with food. No, there really wasn't any horrible pizza. It was, it was like, <laughs> is there <laughs> such a thing? There's not such a thing, but. Like the crazy thing is when you don't play, you're more, you're way more hungry because you eat your pregame meal at like one o'clock, noon or one o'clock, and then you don't eat again until like ten. So you're backing up, and puck drops at seven o'clock. It's like seven thirty, and you're trying to figure out where dinner is and when that pizza is going to be here, and it usually shows up in the third period. So if you're in a, if you're in an escapable spot in the bench, and you see the backup goalie vanish during a TV timeout and see him re- reappear from the tunnel. There's a dog. You know damn well he's tr- finishing that last bite of pizza. He's got a dog that he's trying. <laughs> so you can go leave and get food during games? Only in some ranks. Only in some ranks. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so great. keep an eye on that from now on. You, I would if, like if, to. If you're at a game and you see the third period. And well, that's like the old Bruce Golov story where he'd be eating a hot dog in the stands playing Game Boy or something. Yeah. Guys the American that had, League. That, that would have... Uh, catch up on their jersey or <laughs> that's that's good stuff. what do you think about when you're playing i gotta tell a story quick because 
Oh God. Gus came. Well, Gus. Gus came back to the bench at one point. I think it was earlier this year, and he's like, "I've got a letter, an animal, where the name starts with every letter except for X." He couldn't figure out an animal that starts with an X. So at some point during this game, all he's thinking about is A. Ardvark, B. Beaver, C. Cat, D. This is a real story. Yes. <laughs> what? Yeah. So he's he like counting. come up with an animal for X. He's like you were in between sheep. the box or what? No, this no. probably was a Philly game when he didn't have a shot after the third <laughs> shot for twenty some minutes. See, that's what happens to your mind. You, your mind and your body start connecting. He's probably on a crazy streak right now, a sobriety where everything's coming together for him. Other than I don't, are you trying to think of a? I feel like my well, I'm thinking about both an animal with an X. I want to go on my phone so bad right now, I can't control myself, and also this somehow like. That's is that insane. Z- Xander. Is Xander? Is the fish Xander? Is that an X? That's a fish. Is it? That's, yeah, is that's it an X? animal. Yeah. Is it an X? Yeah. So you should go find Gus at some point and just yell hey, Xander. Z- Xander, by the way. <laughs> Xander. That's with an X. Yes. <laughs> that's how we'll start when he comes on the pod. Just be like, Xander. With an X. That is that is that is when you're in the zone, when you're going through, you're counting sheep in the net. Or Did you think about, did you have, like, is it like a swing thought in golf? Did you have like... Like yoga pants is mine. When I'm golfing, I just think of yoga pants. It helps me. What What about you? I think sometimes when you're in the zone, you have like a song in your head. Okay. You know, like you're into a new song came out and it's in your head. You know? And you just kind of work through that. Yeah, and you're beat. just kind of yeah, you're just kind of singing it or whatever you know, or or one comes on in in the arena, you know, during a TV timeout. And you continue it like the Blink 182 thing. You just keep going yeah, second just, verse. Yeah, and you're third feeling verse. it. You know what I mean? I like that. I like that. Hey, we had Miko on the show mm-hmm. last week. He threw you under the bus a little bit. Did he? Well, we asked him about Coca-Cola and gloves, and he's like, you've been talking to Al Stalock? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got a million different things that uh, sitting on the bench for many games, I noticed. That That's what I said. Best. I said, what, do you think if we didn't notice that you'd hand your gloves back to the trainer every day, you know, or every game three times, or that you'd have Coke? I thought the ice in his Coke had to be crushed every time. Like, you know, like the crushed pebble ice? Right. I thought he was like, he liked that, but it just had to be cold. There had to be ice in there, but it wasn't crushed ice. But the amount of times, because he didn't like, he didn't like set his glass, or his, no, it wasn't glass, it was a paper cup. He didn't set his cup in the trash. And maybe this is on me, I pay attention to too much stuff, but if I'm not playing, like I'm watching everybody in the locker room, what they're doing, being like, this guy's weird, look at him, what he's doing, you know, and I can, <laughs> I got 20 minutes to take it all in. And, uh. But whatever reason, instead of just like setting his cup into the trash, it was like he threw it like thirty feet in the air and like it'd come down and like all the ice would go everywhere. And and that's why how I noticed like there always had to be ice in there. It's like you we walk up to that you walk up to that gray tray, yeah, and take a sip of it and then just throw it into the trash and the ice would go go everywhere. And then you know came the whole rest of his deal that he'd do before he went on the ice, which I could still do probably step for step. We might have to reenact that at some point. Yeah. All right, well, uh, let's. You got anything else? Should you let him get out of here? This is fun. No, that was great. I, I just kind of, you know, when you don't talk to a goalie when they're hot, like I just kind of feel like, like, let's just keep doing what we're doing with the podcast and just keep winning and let's just tread lightly, quiet feet with the wild right now. Let's just so no this. Nick Backstrom because we got into that. You know, how Nicholas Backstrom wouldn't talk to he wouldn't. anybody and do his like short little steps around the yeah. The rank, yeah. The seven-minute lap. Where was it? A 25-minute so, lap or something? Yeah, so Kinger's taking that literally. Can't talk to goaltenders when they're playing well. <laughs> yeah, I think just <laughs> that, that, that Gus story is an all-timer, though. That, that is unbelievable. That's like Riz You were, you were in between the glass? No, no. This is secondhand I heard the story. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty crazy. Maybe his mental coach has got him doing stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> good, good for him to know. All right, well, the, good. the Wild have Pittsburgh coming up. Uh, we buried the lead, actually, a little bit, too. So, uh, new sponsor. Give me, a, give me a clap here, Huss. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Bosch Law sponsored the injury report here. And sometimes we'll touch on uh, what's going on with the Wild. If guys are, are getting healthy, uh, what's going on, or else big injuries around the league. Uh, I do Actually, I'll ask you one more question after this. But uh, Jared Spurgeon did join the club. They did say that this is part of the healing process, and I think it's part of the mental healing process. Like you're never going to come back from surgery and feel 100. percent We touched on this filibuster, so it's he's, was a good. He's got to start trusting himself, and mind, this is part of it. Body. This is part of it. Ecker, uh, obviously, he's got a busted nose. Hathaway probably broken again. It has fault lines, but it doesn't matter. He just needs to take a nap, and it'll be healed after that. Hartman was here skating today. This is Monday before the Tuesday game. Looking good. He has a lower body injury. Uh, he was ill. They left because they did, they had him leave because of that. It's but possibly could have played, but 
Uh, I think they didn't want everybody else getting ill at the end of a road trip when everybody's taxed. And uh, that might be it for, on the injury front right now. I believe so. Which is a good thing. So uh, thanks to Bosch Law for jumping on, another sponsor of the podcast. And um, with that, the last one I want to ask you is, you think the game's gotten cleaner from 10, 15 years ago? Like the, the Department of Player Safety, I haven't heard anything from them. You know, the well, you got an ex teammate there now. So, well, a couple, but yeah, uh, like what? I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's so hard to hit the guys now, too. Like, nobody, it's like they don't hit, it's not dirty, yeah. you know. I, I don't know. It right. seems like the game's cleaner. They've wanted to get certain elements of the, of the game out, you know, back pressure hits and high hits and targeting. They've done that. I mm-hmm. think they've done it. They've done a good job. Yeah, I think so, too. You're not seeing, you know, the. You know, no look where you drop, you know, you drop a puck off and then it's two, three seconds late. The guy's getting smoked up high, you know, every now and then. And then it's all, they're all kind of questionable and close. There's not like the dirty, dirty, you know. So, some of it might be the, the skill of these darn kids now, too, because you you can't have a, a big, heavy D man that just wants to bury somebody. Right. Um, no, you can't. Because they can't skate. These kids are so shifty, shifty. Yeah, you know. Like now shifty. the D, you look at, I bet you if we did it, we should do a deep dive. The average height of a defenseman, it's probably gone down three inches in the last 15 years. Oh, these kids now all have to skate. They have to be uh, skilled. And not that the big guys aren't, but just the the hatchers and even the prongers, stuff like that. Like they're. Truba's probably one of the last ones that is yeah. still lining people up. And, uh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's hard to. It's just hard to hit them now. I yeah. mean, you, you, but you think back to the Nathan Horton laying on the ice, the uh, Seabrook on Bacchus. I mean, it was like musket warfare not that long ago in the NHL. And um, who was the guy in uh, Arizona that would get suspended? 50 Rafi games. Torres, <laughs> Al's old teammate. He would just kill someone <laughs> once a year and then take a Literally. year off. You and. He'd, uh, He'd take a limb every year. I mean, what? Even Tom Wilson, I feel like we haven't heard his. Like name above his fireplace, well. above Rafi Torres' fireplace, is like different Skulls. people's limbs. Tico. It looks like Apocalypse <laughs> Now. Like you ride a boat there in the swamp, and then Rafi's just there with a robe on. Yeah, I mean that guy killed people. I like that stuff actually. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's I, effective. I tell you what, I just still like that. Work. He, he was. I very, was he was scared. Very, he was a very effective player. Yeah. I was scared of Rafi Torres. Well, even you like, think of Chris Simon, right? Remember uh, the only games I never looked at the puck was when Rafi Torres was there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that guy had like a circle saw in his hand when he was playing. I mean, he was like terrifying. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what that is now. I guess Truba is that. Uh, Who's it? Gudis. It just got somebody the other day really well. He had his old teammate. Yeah, Sam he's Carrick in New York. Someone. And so, I think he knew as soon as he hit him, he's like, oh, I sh- yeah. I didn't try. He kind of let up on yeah. it a little bit, but. Uh, could chuckle yeah, still? Uh, could chuckle still give you a little chicken wing, uh, even if you're Jack Eichel with a reconstructed neck? Um, there's a few guys that'll still do it, but uh, not too many. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, this is the podcast that doesn't end. So uh, why don't we just ask more questions? So oh, I'm kidding. Al, thanks for coming, man. You bet. Uh, Anytime. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was fun. Anytime. Uh, Kinger, uh, we're glad to have you back from your trip. Uh, we did actually didn't get into it enough, but you went Florida up to Portland, Maine. Great food, good stuff. Yeah, really? don't sleep on Portland, Maine. No, great spot. Uh, yeah, it was great. I had a I had a great time. It was uh, it's a fun go, city. Go on the road and watch the Wild play a hockey game if you're a fan. It's, but Portland's it's, not a spot it's there. there. Yeah, so just no. go to Boston, watch the Wild play Boston. Two hours north of yeah. Portland. Grab yourself a lobster roll. The San Francisco of New England. Thousand restaurants. You'll feel like every meal you have, you're in the, they're filming the TV show The Bear. I mean, it is a cool spot. Hasn't been ruined by the Californians yet. No offense, San Jose, but um, it's it's a good spot. It was great. Florida was really fun. That's a good trip too. That little, that little what Miami, uh, yeah. that little Florida bang. Now they got the. I, they also got the California trip early in the year. Of the yeah. Wild. I saw San Jose, Anaheim. I don't know if they like that banging that stuff early. It, that's gonna be hard. It's that. gonna be hard. They want that Jan Feb, bro. There's a lot of meat on that bone. We'll save it for the next podcast, but uh, it's going to be tough. All right, fellas. Uh, well, Thank suppose, you. Yeah, I suppose we're here. Till it's here. Peace.